Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Thank you for pressing play and for joining me for a little while. Yes, I'm under the weather. Not doing that great. I'm a little flared up and having a problem with that recently. So please forgive me if I'm not jumping up and down, but I promise by the end of the video, you will be because of this crazy discovery. was predicted some like 100 years ago by Albert Einstein and his theory of relativity, the idea that there would be these things called gravitational waves. Well, not only have they found them, <laughs> but they're not reporting on the one thing that would be like major headline news everywhere on the planet. Anything from time travel to space exploration to the Mandela effect in Nibiru itself. It's all related to this one discovery. And by the end of the show, I am telling you, you're going to be happy that I rolled myself out of bed this morning and did this for all of you. So you better be buckled up, people, because the sensors at LIGO and Virgo, they detected it. And it is now a reality. Gravitational waves exist. There's been a lot of insane news, everybody, that has been coming out. I mean, a lot. I mean, all of the stuff, and it's happening like at once. The stuff that I've been talking about for over a year, Planet Nine, CERN, other dimensions, simulation theory, Mandela effect, all of this stuff, quantum physics, M theory, string theory, other dimensions, the D wave computer, quantum computing, now quantum gravitation. It's all connected. And the discovery that was just made, and they were, they were, listen, they were really, they were really, as the kids say, they were really hype about this. They were really fired up about this discovery because Albert Einstein, back about 100 years ago, he predicted that something called gravitational waves would exist. Basically, Einstein and his theory of relativity, he put forth the idea of these gravitational waves, which basically everything is connected on this like fabric, right? And we're all kind of like, I don't know, if you take bread and you take a bunch of jam and we're all spread on top of that on top of that bread, but it, it is theorized that there would be other dimensions. Like we exist in three dimensions, okay? So you're in a three dimensional space. Now you can't perceive a fourth dimension because fourth dimension they say is, is time. But according to quantum mechanics and quantum theory, there are 11 dimensions. And with each dimension, you basically, you go a lot, I mean, you basically go from existing in what you believed to be just, you know, reality, to being able to travel in and out of time, back and forth through time, to if you enter the uh, 10th or 11th dimension, anything that is feasible is possible, at the same time that everything that is feasible is possible. I was trying to explain this to one of my boys, and he said, I guess you enter the 11th dimension, you meet God, or you are God, and I thought that was really kind of an interesting way of looking at it. But this is what's been going down. CERN has been trying to break into other dimensions for a long time. It's what they've been doing, smashing those uh, atoms together. And they've, you know, they've said that they haven't been successful into really doing that. They've created these little mini black holes. They've stored antimatter. But have they really broken into this other dimension? They say that they haven't. People that have experienced the Mandela effect would say that we're already in some kind of an alternate dimension where either a couple of dimensions bled through together or they entered the fourth dimension, went back in time, and as a test run, changed things to see how it would uh, affect all of us. I mean, look, this is all just, this is all just um, an interesting thought experiment, right? But now it's all possible, like 100% possible. So let me go into this for you.
basically on the heels of NASA saying that there is a Planet Nine, Planet X, Nibiru. Uh, now it's, yeah, it's there. They say it's there. They still say that they haven't found it, but it's on the uh, outer edges of the solar system. Uh, recent news said that it was actually part of our solar system. And even more recently, just a day or two ago, NASA called Nibiru, Planet Nine, uh, a super Earth. Now you wouldn't call it a super Earth unless they thought that maybe at one time that it could possibly hold life. Not just to say that it's like 10 times or 20 times the size of Earth, which is what they're <laughs> their rebuttal would be, but know that it was a super Earth, and that's the way they describe it. Over the last year, I've talked about how uh, the world has been scrambling to not only put uh, telescopes that reach the farthest dimensions of our universe, uh, infrared and different frequencies, but that concern the, the colliders where they smash particles together and, and, and Fermi Labs in Chicago and even out here in uh, Brookhaven. Oh, and by the way, yes, I will be. You want to talk about how you put an intention out there and all of a sudden it happens. Well, I've wanted for a long time to speak to a physicist from CERN to get all the inside scoop. And you know that I, a lot of you have been waiting for it. I got some of it on tape. So if he doesn't come on, I'm just going to play that. But we've been back and forth, and my latest email to him was to see if he's still coming on. But anyway, let's get into this. Uh, let's get into this. This crazy new finding because I'm probably uh, basically over um, the last couple of years. They are trying to create this thing called gravitational wave um, science. You know, they've created a couple of gravitational wave observatories where they're trying to capture these little, these little waves. So imagine if everything is kind of, we're all connected to this one little fabric that if something were to move very, very quickly or kind of sort of appear, it would basically disrupt and send off these waves, these gravitational waves, which they could then um, capture and monitor. And with the findings in the last couple of days, they just found also gamma rays. Uh, they were able to capture gamma rays at the same time as gravitational waves. I know a lot of this stuff that I'm saying to you sounds absolutely, makes like no sense. I don't get it either. But just imagine like a sound frequency or a little, a little blip that comes through that basically tells you that there's something else out there. To be able to calculate this, to be able to capture it, proved Einstein's theory of relativity it was like that last missing piece of the puzzle, which is why they're all so crazy about it. And they're jumping up and down and they're cheering and they're excited. But they're not telling us about the thing that they should be telling us about, why it is that they're so excited. Gravitation waves are extremely difficult to measure. It's one of the greatest challenges in experimental physics. LIGO is um, a new type of observatory that measures gravitation wave. And we have here a toy model to explain how it works. A laser interferometer consists of a laser, then the laser beam is going to a central beam splitter and then going into two different arms. And when a gravitation wave would pass through the system, the uh, light pattern and the intensity of the light changes and that's where we can measure the gravitation wave. LIGO is much, much more sensitive, so it can detect everything that goes around it, ocean waves hitting the far shores or people moving around the instrument. The LIGO project consists of two sites and uh, the laser runs actually through four kilometer long tunnels. So having two sides allows us to distinguish between local noise and a global gravitation wave signal passing through. The scientists say now that they know pairs of black holes do exist, they hope to use gravitational waves to probe some of the most mysterious objects in space and get more clues about the secrets of the universe. What's going to come now is we're going to be able to hear more of these things. And no doubt we'll hear things that we expected to hear, like binary black holes or perhaps binary neutron stars colliding. But we will also hear things that we never expected. And as we open a new window of astronomy, we may see things that we never, we never saw before. LIGO and Virgo announced in a huge press conference that they have proven gravitational waves. 
They recorded them. It's real. And this is the cool part, right? Well, if you can prove gravitational waves exist and you can record it, then it basically proves that there is another dimension. Not just one, but like 11. And how do they explain this? Well, consider what a black hole is, that it actually is a void that empties out into another dimension, a dimension that we can't perceive, a dimension that we aren't even aware of. Like a two-dimensional being would not be aware of us, a three-dimensional being, if we tried to appear on a two-dimensional plane, kind of like here I am with the paper, and then all of a sudden a 3D hand kind of comes through, what happens is they'd only see like a two-dimensional little blip constantly changing. So the fact that now we know without a shadow of a doubt that you can enter into another dimension, that there is another dimension that basically gravity is kind of bleeding and leaking into, that means that there's the possibility that there's other dimensional beings. That means that there's a possibility of, of um, quantum space travel. That means that it explains why, you know, they've ex watched atoms uh, go from one place and basically at another place or why Einstein called it spooky action at a distance where two um, of the same electrons w would react the same way but not even connected. So now here's the thing that's really super crazy about this. This is probably why they're trying to look into this because, you know, we've talked about these quantum computers. The quantum computers, which are said to operate in other dimensions. Well, think about what that means for a second. If the fourth dimension is time and then you can enter into the fourth dimension, then you can travel in time and you can do all sorts of things. So there are other dimensions, other dimensions that, I mean, it's now like that's a fact. That's the big news. But they're not talking about that, you know? They're talking about gravitational waves and gamma waves and, and they're, they're saying how exciting this is and that they're saying that they can now go back in time and understand how the universe was formed. But what they're really saying is they can go back in time. Like legitimately, now it's a possibility if they're not already doing it. But we know that they don't release things to the public unless they've already done it. So it's probably been going on for a long time, which tells me that there are other big discoveries in the works. Now, just think about that. If you can get into the fourth dimension and you can alter time, you can go backwards and forwards in time, and you can, get, say, get into the, the fifth dimension and the sixth dimension, and you can travel in time at will. You get into the seventh dimension, you can travel to other galaxies like this. You travel to the last dimension, the 11th dimension, all things would be feasible, everything. As they say, all things are possible. With faith, perhaps all things are, if we can enter into that dimension. It's interesting because some people say that the brain can operate in 11 dimensions as well. So perhaps on the outside, as we find this major discovery, we find that this is just more proof that everything I've been saying on this channel is 100% true. You and I and everyone, we're all more than we know and we need to seek it. Perhaps we too can enter that other dimension. But now you know, now you know, the stuff that we've been talking about, time travel, all this stuff where everybody says can't happen, now it can happen. Other dimensions exist. Deal with it, right? It just gets me very excited to think that, uh, you know, where we're really headed. And um, I love each and every one of you. I'm really not feeling that great. So um, I hope that this was adequate for you, but I really feel like it's important. You know, you're there for me every Tuesday and I wanna be there for you every Tuesday and then some. So thank you for, for subscribing, for sharing and, and for commenting and liking, because it means a lot. 
And look, if I do a video that you're against and you say things like in comments, I love you, but I'm gonna have to unsub, yeah, you don't love me. <laughs> I mean, really, if you love somebody, you don't just abandon them the instant that they're saying something you're uncomfortable with. Just like when I was saying that there were other dimensions, some people would say that, you know, oh, it's terrible, that's, that's, that's the devil talking, Jacob. But now, it's fact. Love each and every one of you. I will see you again next Tuesday. Please do subscribe and share the channel around. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.